The Roaring Twenties, among other things, were roaring with the sound of aircraft engines, airplanes, airships, auto gyros. There were a whole number of different flying technologies that were being experimented with during this time. Since humans first pondered the possibility of flight, there's been an insatiable curiosity about what it's like to glide through the clouds. More than a decade after the Wright brothers showed humanity that flying was possible, countless pioneers of the 1920s proved air travel could become the desired option to explore the world. From the advancement of the Zeppelins to record-setting flights and airplanes, the 20s were a decade of aviation advancement. Perhaps no better moment exemplifies that than what happened on September 28, 1924, when the U.S. Army completed a once unthinkable milestone, a flight around the world. In the years after World War I, aviation was still an experimental technology and both for civilian and military purposes, different groups and different individuals, different governments as well, were interested in exploring its potential. The Army's idea to explore aviation's potential involved a meticulously planned flight around the world. Four planes would spend half the year navigating the globe. The idea behind the round the world flight was that first of all, of course, it would demonstrate the capabilities of aviation, both for civilian purposes in a broader sense and also specifically with regard to the military. It would also encourage diplomatic goodwill amongst different countries around the world in a peaceful way, but it was also a projection of American power. Starting April 6, 1924, four two-man crews took off from a field in North Seattle. And it's a good thing, ultimately, that they started out with four airplanes, technically a fifth one in reserve, because by the time they get to the end of the journey, only two of the four airplanes are actually still able to fly. The planes named Boston, Chicago, New Orleans, and of course Seattle started their journey with the first leg to Alaska. One of the first airplanes, the Seattle, which was actually being flown by Frederick Martin and his mechanic, ran into a mountain flying in Alaskan fog and he and Martin spent 10 days walking their way out of the wilderness before they were finally recovered. So nearly from the beginning, a four-plane journey became a three-plane effort. But other than that hiccup, most of the journey around the world went smoothly. Stops in Japan, China, India, and throughout Europe, all were celebrated by crowds cheering on the airmen's accomplishments. But the fervor reached new heights when the American flyboys got back on U.S. soil. In any age, a feat like this would draw considerable attention and public interest. But in the early 1920s, you're talking about the beginnings of radio. You're also in a period where newspapers are a very dominant form of the mass media. So the exploits of the Army aviators drew a lot of interest. And of course, the fact that they're Americans doesn't hurt. So when they come across arriving in Boston and then continuing onward, ultimately flying back to Seattle, a lot of people are following this. It's a really heroic tale. These guys did something incredible. On September 28, 1924, the two remaining Douglas World Cruisers and a replacement for the Boston arrived in Seattle, completing their mission in little more than 170 days. The slogan, first around the world, became part of the Douglas corporate symbol, which also had a globe around it. And if you look even today at the Boeing Company's logo, you can still see that globe going all the way back to the 1920s as part of Boeing's corporate imagery. The milestone set the stage for other pioneers to ask, what's next? 